Let's figure that out and talk to the man himself. By the way, current groundskeeper, Dr. Nick Elam, joins us right now, as well as the man who developed this formula. So how did you come up with this, doctor? Well, thanks for having me on the show. So I'm a lifelong basketball fan, and so uh, it's disheartening to me that so often the last part of the game is sometimes the least exciting part of the game. We see the quality and the style of play deteriorate, where the leading team stalls and plays very passively. The trailing team, when they're on defense, they have to foul and hand away free points. When they're on offense, they have to rush and force up ugly shots. That whole combination of factors makes the outcome of games too predictable. Uh, Late lead, or I'm sorry, late deficits are very difficult to overcome, even if they're very slim deficits. And so what you get is many big games and good games in basketball history that have just kind of faded out with a whimper without one signature moment to carry on. And so uh, I thought long ago, it was back in 2007 when I first thought, well, all these phenomena are attributable to the game clock. Maybe if you just got rid of the game clock at the end of the game, it would address these issues. Okay. And how did you know it would work? It seems like it worked for some people. Well, I know when you read about it for the first time or hear about it for the first time, it really sounds like this concept's from outer space. And it took me a long time to uh, sell myself on this concept and, and really believe that it had merit, to believe that it was necessary and that it was sound and that it was cool. But after seeing it in action, I really believe uh, as strongly as ever that it is all of those things. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the research that went into it to find out you know, just how common that fouling strategy is, um, that it happens at about half of games, and most of the games where we don't see that fouling strategy, it's because the trailing team just gives up. They're not, they don't even bother with fouling, and that's not such a good thing either. But when they do resort to that fouling strategy, that it only works about 1% of the time. So not only is it, uh, uh, you know, kind of an unappealing uh, strategy and an approach, mm -hmm. but it just doesn't work. It doesn't work, and yet it's the trailing team's best option under the regular format. And so... Um, you know, again, all of this, having it on paper and now seeing it on, on the court and me seeing that it's meeting its primary aims is really exciting to see. Okay, now you bring up a really good point, this idea of it's helping the trailing team. And I think, uh, taking the other side of this, I want to get your sense of this. If I'm the team that's leading and I'm up by that point and I'm doing great or maybe up by a little bit more, in a sense it could be looked at as, well, it disadvantages me. I'd rather have the game end, or if I'm already up by a lot, I'm on the trail of winning, but instead the game's starting over and I'm forced to reach this target. How do you address the criticism that this, this really helps the trailing team more than the leading team? Well, certainly no one has to apologize for criticizing or scrutinizing the idea. Like I said, it took me a while for me to convince myself that the idea had merit. But when it comes to uh, looking at it from the standpoint of the trailing team, I don't think the Elam ending necessarily uh, favors the trailing team, but I think that it takes away some of the artificial disadvantages that the clock uh, poses against them. Uh, to an extent, I think that the trailing team should be at a disadvantage, but I think the deficit should be the disadvantage uh, itself right there. Uh, we shouldn't be adding these artificial disadvantages where now when they're on defense, they have to foul and hand away free points. When they're on offense, they have to rush and force up ugly shots. I think you should just play straight up and see who the better team is. And so what we're seeing right now is, is this really cool phenomenon where these outcomes of the games are, are less predictable. We are seeing some cool comebacks. Uh, just earlier this tournament, we saw uh, a team that was, it was Red Scare, it was a Dayton alumni team that was down to their last basket. They couldn't give up one more basket. They make stops on seven straight possessions and come back and win the game on a fast break put pat dunk. And that was just electrifying. Uh, last year, we saw a team that was down to their last basket. Uh, Primetime players, they stopped their opponent on eight straight possessions. So would you, would, so, going on 11 so let me ask you this the then. Game. Let me ask you this. It's a great point. Let me ask you this. W would you make any changes to make this rule better or to address some concerns that people might have? So I look at the format with a very critical eye. Sometimes I think it's its toughest critic because I mm -hmm. think uh, I really want to scrutinize it and make it as good as it can possibly be. Uh, so to get, I'll get into the weeds a little bit. There is a very specific sudden death situation. Um, I call it the 3 2 1 scenario where mm -hmm. the offense is exactly three points away from the target score, the defense is one or two points away from the target score. And then we've seen in some games where the defense will foul to prevent a game winning three pointer. Now, I would like to see those. Uh, situations play out more fluidly, and there's an easy way you could do it. Uh, you could essentially just crack down on fouls on the floor on that very specific situation. Uh, you know, one shot in the ball if there's a foul on the floor, something like that. But I think we're right now just trying to allow teams to push the limits of it. Let's uh, really let things play out and see if there's even an, an issue that needs to be addressed. I applaud John Mugar for taking a very patient approach with it because I've right. uh, proposed different modifications to the format, and he says that they're actually pretty happy with the way it's working now. Tell you what.
couple seconds, just five seconds left. One word answer here. Do you, will you try to sell this to the NBA? I already have, and I'm encouraged that uh, they've been very fair-minded about it. Um, you know, again, I think it will be a long time before it grows up to those highest levels, but uh -huh. I'm encouraged by how fair-minded they've been about the concept. All right. We'll see how this goes. Dr. Elam, thank you so much. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, highlights, and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.